Welcome back. Here we're taking stock and we're discussing the market this week and the week gone by with Dheerat Sachdev, Senior Vice President and Fund Manager at HSBC Global Asset Management. Dheeraj, it's been an interesting week when you're looking at what mid-caps have done and what the large-cap story has been. Because while the, the benchmark index has been down by about a percent, the mid-cap index actually saw a rise of almost eight-tenths of a percent. And we've seen a lot of different stories, jute stocks, tile, you know, uh, tile stocks, a lot of different plays sort of move around here and there. Is there any particular mid-cap basket that you like because of a certain theme or a certain policy play? Well, yes, I, um, I think I've been generally questioned on the debate between uh, mid caps versus large caps, and I think this debate is completely futile. The focus has to be on the quality of business, uh, the underlying growth, uh, the sustainability of cash flow generation, etc., rather than debating about the market size or the market cap of the company. Uh, but having said that, uh, the mid cap is a vast ocean of universe of stocks. And uh, there are unique business mid-caps to expensive mid-caps to attractively valued mid-caps to, uh, to, uh, uh, to lots of varieties of mid-caps across the sectors or the emerging businesses which may not necessarily be available in the large cap space. Uh, but uh, there are the several themes that we like uh, or several segments that we like within the mid-caps. One of them has been the NBFCs, uh, financial services companies um, within the mid-caps. So be it um, a gold mortgage finance company or a housing finance company uh, are the spaces we like because the valuations are still attractive. Uh, we also like stock broking and wealth management companies because of the reasons mentioned earlier, where is, there's a shift is, which is happening into financial savings. Uh, and these, uh, these, this augurs well for wealth management companies or stock broking companies as well. Besides, we like agro and specialty chemical companies. Agro for the reasons that uh, only a handful or per small percentage of the farmer community is aware of uh, agri-input space or usage of pesticides. And given the fact that there is an increasing pressure on uh, them to improve crop yields because of rising labor cost or rising food costs uh, from time to time, I think uh, that space is very interesting. It's a very capital efficient business with uh, $6 to $8 billion market size growing at 12 to 14%. We like this specialty chemical, which is a space which is very similar to a pharma business, but with less of a regulation. I think uh, the environment concerns in China is shifting this business into India. And most of these companies have demonstrated superior chemistry skills over time. Lower crude prices is also helping them in terms of uh, driving their growth. And again, the business is very capital efficient. Besides, we like other uh, segments within the mid caps, which include cement, uh, print media, and home textiles, where the valuations are still attractive. One specific mention, since I talked about gold mortgage finance, I think uh, uh, there are uh, only few companies that are listed uh, as organized or called gold mortgage finance companies. And the penetration of these companies are still less than 3 or 4% as far as organized gold mortgage finance business is concerned. So there's a lot of room to grow. And uh, the availability of retail financial products has a lot of opportunity, uh, uh, given the fact that even Jandan Yojana is talking about the same. So we like broad NBSC theme within the mid-cap space. Okay. Uh, before we wind up the conversation, Dheeraj, you started off the discussion by telling us that you're bullish on the market, at least for the very longer term. Uh, do you have any kind of Nifty or Sensex target? I mean, I'm not looking for a number. I'm just trying to gauge what the returns in this market could be for an average investor, say, over the next 6 to 12 months. Next six months is difficult because I think large part of the uh, returns have been upfronted now. Since I manage mid-cap funds, I can't give a target or we don't use uh, target specifics for Sensex and, and Nifty. But I think it's reasonable or conceivable to understand that if the earnings growth is expected to be higher of 18 to 20 percent over the next three years, and we are hopeful that this time it should meet out compared to the earlier periods where the hopes on the earnings has not been materialized, I think that that kind of... Uh, you know, 15 to 18 percent kind of returns compounded should happen for the next two to three years for the retail investors on the large caps. But if you identify some of the mid cap names pretty well, I think the alpha generation capability or returns higher than the market averages uh, becomes even more compelling. So that's why relatively in an economic cycle upturn, mid caps tend to outperform and that's what we believe so.
Okay, Dheeraj, uh, you have a good weekend. Thanks so much for joining us and giving us your view. That's the word coming in from HSBC on uh, the markets and, of course, uh, all the mid-cap stocks that have been in focus. Ashwini Gujral is with us to give us a quick roundup of how the uh, week has gone by and, more importantly, what to do next week. Ashwini, we've discussed this. Uh, the market has been sideways this week. Do you expect, expect a similar trend next week as well? See, it depends on results. I don't know when Indusin Bank is. If they come out with, you know, blockbuster set of results, you could have the opposite of what happened on CNX IT on the bank nifty. So very event specific, but on declines, it remains a buy on dip type of market. And uh, 8,800, 9,000, that is now a line in the sand. All the consolidation has happened in the last two years. From here, you will see higher levels, but only once the market gets a sense of what the earnings are going to uh, tell the market. So the idea should be to keep on buying the financials, NBFC, etc., and probably stay away from uh, IT metals. That's exactly the question I was just coming to, um, uh, Ashuni. On metals or on IT for that matter, after the drubbing that we saw on Thursday, is there still anything to play on the short side or would you rather completely avoid a trade there? See, in a bull market, it's uh, often not a good idea to go short. But yes, more downside should be possible both on IT and metals. Metals is probably correcting because it had a huge rally. And IT, meanwhile, remains in a bear market. And that bear market continues. Bear markets end when everybody who had to sell has sold. And I think a lot of people are still uh, quite overweight on IT. So till all of them get out, uh, I don't think the bear market on IT will end. About your stocks for next week, anything interesting on your list? See, stocks will do well. Even today, the market breadth was hardly uh, one is to one. So uh, I think oil marketing is breaking out uh, after being subdued for several weeks. So HPCL uh, has a target about 590. Escorts has uh, done extremely well through the week and uh, more could be expected. Uh, this could have a target about 600. And India Bulls housing finance, that is also a fresh mover. Housing finance did well all through the week. And out here, we could expect uh, targets of 1,100. Okay, Ashwini, thanks a lot for that. So those are some calls coming in from our technical expert as well as views from our fundamental expert. But with that, it is a wrap on taking stock. Surbi, it's a long weekend. So wishing you a happy weekend as well and wishing all our viewers a happy Easter, happy Besakhi. It uh, promises to be quite an exciting one. I think a much needed break for everyone out there. We wish you a happy weekend. That's it from the team that puts together Taking Stock. Thank you for watching.